Skeleton Warriors was billed as the He-Man for the 90s, and it fell seriously short of his expectations, despite the cartoon, video game, and action figures. As a kid, I had no idea about the breadth of this short-lived franchise, but the Skeleton Warrior action figures themselves were seriously exciting for a kid. You could say, they were bad to the bone. I was able to pick up most of the line brand new in packaging for around the $12 mark. And I ended up picking up Baron Dark Loose because I knew he'd end up on one of the Skeleton Warrior vehicles, in my case the Warhorse. Baron Dark himself has quite the majestic head of hair, but adorned in spikes, fur and smaller skulls. He certainly stands out among the rest of the skeleton crew. He has a very aggressive action pose. Typical of the Playmates figures in the 90s, but he's incredibly uneasy on his feet. And yeah, that's why I opted to pair my Baron Dark figure with the Skeleton Warhorse. The Skeleton Legion Warhorse is mostly just a statue. There's no articulation in the legs or the head, but it does come with a projectile missile that fires from its neck, and it does have a lance attachment that you can remove for our Baron Dark to hold. Overall, it's a great looking vehicle. Not quite as finely detailed as the Skeleton Warrior figures themselves, or as fun as the Skull Cycle, but um, even the back of the box for this figure, they have a really hard time making the Warhorse look exciting. It shoots a missile, you can put an action figure on it. The Skeleton Legion Warhorse was one of the last Skeleton Warrior figures I picked up, along with Dagger. Ultimately, I'm glad I did. The Skeleton Legion wouldn't be complete without a Warhorse, and it really completes the set, but look, I wasn't rushing out to find it. The first Skeleton Warrior I did pick up, the one with the single most nostalgia for me personally, is Dr. Cyborg, a mechanical mix of metal machine and skeleton. This is the figure that I begged my mum for as a kid, and my brother ended up getting a Racula. I picked up Dr. Cyborg mint on card with his missile launcher, and uh, his missiles, which really do look like sausages. A mace and a skull gun. I really like the look of his fully painted skull gun, and it complements the figure a little better than the gaudy blue and red missile launcher. But look, as far as doctors go, this one is pretty well equipped. Dr. Cyborg has swivel shoulders and hips, his metal jaw is on a hinge, and you can move one of his knees, the uh, metal one. Overall, it's a great look for a figure, and Playmates did an awesome job capturing the contrast between the shiny, bright metal and the worn, dusty looking bones. Still not sure why a doctor would need a mace though. Then again, the mace and that really gaudy looking missile launcher from Dr. Cyborg both ended up with a Racula. With six arms, you can literally see why the good guys, the Legion of Light, never bothered getting released down under. The good guys were never going to compete with Oracula. So he came with a spider shaped goo gun, a shield and a spring loaded mace. I find with a lot of the spring loaded weapons from this line, they tend to fire without prompt and I am not recommending them for display. You're probably going to lose the projectiles. Looking at the Skeleton Warriors cartoon series, Oracula's design was seriously ambitious. His arms aren't usually animated at the same time, so they're sort of clumped together in the cartoon, and they always tend to look really awkward. Playmates did a great job with the design for the character. Um, it's well balanced, the arms all look menacing, without being like overdone or goofy. Oracula has typical articulation for a skeleton warrior, swivel shoulders and hips. There's no forearm, head or hand articulation, but where Oracula really exceeds is the fact that all of his arms have shoulder articulation, and he's one of the few figures that can stand unaided without needing to balance him. And that goes for Dagger as well, really good balance. So, Dagger. He's the comedic, goofy character that's constantly fumbling the plans or screwing up in some way. But you know, in saying that, his dedication to the Skeleton Legion is intense. 
Armed with an axe with a skeleton head projectile as well as his gun, I really do like the look of Dagger in general and I really like the way his cape is done revealing the spines on the back. Again, really awesome sculpting even for like the lowest ranking figure in the Skeleton Warriors, Playmates did a really awesome job bringing him to life. Dagger, as the name implies, also comes equipped with his own dagger that's strapped to his leg. Uh, so Dagger, again in the cartoon, often ends up in the front lines with Shriek. She's a bit like an on-the-ground commander for the Skeleton Warriors. She's smart, she's cold, and she's calculating. I also assume she's a lot easier to animate than Oracula, who doesn't seem to have quite as much screen time. Shriek was an interesting figure, with the large scythe, this uh, knife strapped to a boot, and the shield. I really do like the way her skeletal frame has been moulded, it's sort of sleek and expressive, but these feet are seriously insane, it's just far too awkward to get her to stand at all. You can try to balance her with the scythe, but I just found it much easier to strap her into the skull cycle. So it's no denying I am a massive fan of the skull cycle. The big skull up front opens to reveal a missile. And look, the skull cycle itself has two modes. The battle mode where you can lift the little wings up and extend the front blade, as well as its fast flying streamlined mode. Unlike the war horse back of the box, they definitely found a few more things to talk about here with the skull cycle. Seriously, awesome vehicle. We definitely needed more of these. And yeah, I know the humans in the cartoon had a similar vehicle to the Skull Cycle, but interestingly enough, the human good guy figures never made it to Australia, and looking at them online, I can't help but feel it's because they're a little bit too generic. There were no vehicles for these figures, and the lineup is missing Talon, which was the only good female character and still a massive part of the franchise. Honestly, I don't feel like we missed out too much by not getting any of the good characters. The Skeleton Warriors are clearly the highlight and the biggest memory for me walking into the toy store and just seeing the row of these figures. There weren't that many to choose from but man they just left such an impression for me. I didn't know as a kid about either the cartoon or the video game which was available on the PS1 and the Saturn. It was really weird going back to revisit the cartoon after all these years of wondering about the story behind these characters when I used to play with the figures as a kid. And look, seeing how they were all portrayed, in my mind these guys were all super tough and just ruthless. Watching the cartoon, it's weird seeing the characters given their own personality. This crystal cannon will allow you to induce the skeletal transformation at a distance. I'll no longer have to sully my hands, Cyborg. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. And if you need some more Playmates action, I've gone ahead and reviewed the Toxic Crusaders toy line already. It's a much more colourful, a lot more radical, but it's really cool seeing how diverse the Playmates toys got in the 90s. So uh, stay tuned for more leftovers and thanks for watching. For more action figure reviews, be sure to check out leftovercultureview.com. Cheers guys.